Hi, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started here, so if everyone could take their seats. Welcome to day three of the 2015 Colorado Health Symposium. It's been a great couple of days. I, I've heard some great keynote sessions and wonderful plenaries, attended some really engaging discovery sessions, and had a lot of good times as well at the evening receptions. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. I'm Amy Latham. I'm the Portfolio Director for Healthcare and Health Coverage at the Colorado Health Foundation, and I'm currently serving as the Interim Vice President for Philanthropy. It's in that role that I have the distinct honor of opening up this third and final day of the 2015 Health Symposium. Uh, this is truly one of my favorite annual events. I get to come up to beautiful Keystone, Colorado. I get to spend time with friends and colleagues from around the state and hear about the cutting edge of health and healthcare issues. It's, it's truly wonderful. Um, I'm wondering of the folks who are here with us today, for how many of you is this your first health symposium? Oh, great, great. Welcome to all of you. I hope you are enjoying yourself. Um, how many have attended between two and five health symposiums? Good. Between six and 10? Do we have some long timers? Yep. Has anyone attended more than 10 health symposiums? Look at that. Look at that. That's great. All right. Well, people just keep coming back. I think that tells us we're doing something right. Um, as I think many of you know, the symposium does have a, a long history stretching back several decades. From my perspective, it's, real, it's an event, I, I would call it almost an institution that's at once timeless and very, very current. Uh, our talented team of conference planners spends a lot of time thinking about how to really update the format, introduce new activities and events, things like the um, aromatherapy station that I just enjoyed this morning and uh, the dance party that we had last year, things like that. Um, I thought it might be fun for us to take a, a look back at some of the major changes in the symposium's history. Um, I thought I'd start with the fact that our breakfast offerings used to look a lot less like this, this beautiful display of fruits and vegetables and juice and real food, as we might call it, and a lot more like this, like you know the, the window at a Dunkin' Donut shop. Um, I have a feeling after uh, Dr. Lustig's presentation that uh, it, it will be a long, long time before we ever see this again at the symposium. Um. We, uh, in 2008, we moved from Beaver Creek to beautiful Keystone, Colorado. This was a major change in the symposium, and we made this change to make the event much more open and accessible and affordable to folks from all over the state, and it's worked really well. Attendance has increased from about 250 to well over 400, um, so it, this was a very important change in our history. Um, Conference materials used to look like this. This is Joan Henneberry leafing through a four-inch binder in front of her. I'm sure Joan still has that binder somewhere and probably refers to it regularly. Um, then conference materials look like this. See this tiny thing right here? We used to hand this out. And now it's as easy as this. You just go to the foundation's website. You go to the Health Symposium page. You can download any presentation that you want directly from our web page. So talk about advances. Um, at one time, the afternoon activity, and I, as I understand it, the all-day activity for some folks was golf, and um, now our afternoon activities are yoga and Zumba, and you can see our Live Well contingent uh, front and center there on the Zumba slide. In 2009, we started tweeting from the Health Symposium, so that was six years ago that we joined Twitter. Um, our first tweets were very instructional. They were very basic, as you can see on the screen. We told people what to do and how to use, the, how to use Twitter. And then we really got into some pretty heady topics pretty quickly via Twitter, and it's really continued ever since. That first year, we had about 100 followers on Twitter, about 495 tweets that referenced the event. We have over 1,500 followers today. And at last year's event, there were more than 6,800 tweets that referenced the symposium. You know, another major change was we started live streaming the event in 2010. And this was another move to really open access to the symposium, to the great content that we offer here, well beyond the four walls of this room. And it's worked um, just fantastically well. Again, that first year we had about 217 people who viewed some aspect, some part of the symposium online. Last year, we had nearly 18,000 unique views of symposium events or content via our live stream. So um, truly impressive. 
We presented the first Eigelhardt Award in 2007. As you heard last night, this is really our way to recognize contributions to health and health policy in Colorado. And a huge congratulations to Governor Lamb for being honored last night. So I should note that many of these changes that I just mentioned really reflect the vision of our former CEO, Annie Warhover, to really open up the conference, to make it open, accessible, um, timely, relevant, exciting, energetic, and very importantly, fun. I am incredibly excited, as I know many of you are. You've shared with me that after seeing Karen's video, you're very excited for the energy that she is going to bring to this event um, next year. I think we can count on more exciting innovation and definitely more fun uh, in, in future symposiums. So um, a couple of things have remained the same about the symposium over the year, and I thought I would just mention, you know, first and foremost, the incredibly high quality content. I just hear it again and again. Where do we find these speakers? How do we do it? Um, I'll, I'll share with you in a moment the team that deserves the credit for um, putting together this, this uh, incredible agenda that we um, all enjoy. But the other thing that really remains constant is that people's favorite part of the symposium is really the networking. It's connecting with your colleagues and your friends, making new acquaintances. You know, we all do that. That's really the theme of this year's symposium, connecting. Um, we do that in the hallways. We do that in, you know, over meals and in between sessions and at the evening receptions and in the bar at the Keystone Lodge. At least that's what I've heard. Um, I decided I should check this out for myself, so in the spirit of research, I went to the bar on Wednesday night, and I felt like I really needed to go back last night and double check, and in fact, yes, lots of people do connect at the Keystone Lodge Bar and uh, have a really good time, I think, uh, talking about a lot of health issues um, and, and other stuff as well. So in all seriousness, while I'm enjoying the sessions and the content, goofing around at the, the bar at night, um, there is a team of professionals that is working very hard. Let's see if we can get this picture up. Um, to really make this event truly an exceptional experience for all of us. And I would like just to take a moment to thank them and recognize them for their work. Do we have that slide? Did I do that? No? They told me if I just looked panicked at the back of the room, someone would step to my rescue. So I'm sure that they're working on that right now. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a team of just truly exceptional people who work on planning this event. Um, I would like to just recognize them. Taryn Ford, our Director of Communications. Samantha Travelstead, our Communications Assistant. Sarah Porter Osborne and Kim Ribich, to name just a few of the folks who spend a lot of their time working on making this, um, this event just, as I said, a truly wonderful event for all of us. Anyone who's ever been involved in planning an event like this knows that it takes a commitment to making sure that it is a wonderful experience for everyone in the room, but it also takes an exceptional uh, attention to detail, a focus on really flawless execution of the event, and lucky for us, those are the specialties of the team that we have in place. They are supported in their work by this wonderful group of people. Um, this is our entire, most of our communications team at the Colorado Health Foundation. And so I'd like just to recognize this group of folks and thank them for their work. They are supported in, um, in their effort by an even larger group of people. I'd like to recognize the entire staff of the Colorado Health Foundation. Um, if everyone who is wearing a red name badge, you're easily recognizable. All of the staff of the Colorado Health Foundation, if you could please stand and be recognized. They all play an important role. Thank you, thank you. They all play a variety of roles in both planning and supporting the event on site. Thank you all very much for your work. There's also a group of people who sit out at the front desk and are there to answer any question that you have, address any concern that you have. Those folks who staff our registration desk work very hard during this event, and I thank them, too, for their work. So thank you all very much. Okay, a couple more thank yous, and then we'll get on to the business of the day. I would li I'd like to echo Ron's thanks to our board of directors for their leadership and commitment to this event, for their presence here. It's wonderful to have you all here. Thank you. 
And then finally, I'd like to thank Ron Porter, our wonderful interim CEO. I know he probably does not want to be recognized up here from the podium, but too bad. Um, thank you so much for keeping us focused and energized over the last several months. And um, thank you for your leadership, which has been inspirational to so many of us. Thanks, Ron. Okay, that was a lot of thank yous. I have just one more. Thank you all so much for being here with us today for the past couple of days. It's your insights, it's your expertise, it's what you share with us and with each other that really sets this event apart from the rest. So thank you all very much. So we are, we are approaching our final morning of the symposium. It's going to be an excellent one. Um, we're um, about a couple hours away from heading back down the mountain, hopefully reinvigorated by all of the ideas and the interactions that we've had here together. Um, but first, we're going to spend some time talking about connecting values to action. And this is an incredibly important topic. Uh, as we think about this morning's sessions, I'd like to suggest that seeing the connections between all beings is really a value in and of itself. And I'd like to share a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. We've shared a lot of quotes over the past couple days, who said that all of life is interrelated. We're all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied into a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one destiny affects all of us indirectly. This morning's session will be moderated by Michael Booth. Michael is an award-winning journalist, well-known to many 